In this video, I'm going to go over the step-by-step -step procedures that I use when I service pools on my route. So whether you're a homeowner or a pool service professional, these are the steps you're going to take each week as you service your pool. First thing I do when I get to account is I scan the pool to make sure there's no algae, there's no dead animals, or nothing unusual is happening. And I carry a variety of test kits on my truck for my pool route. And having a good test kit to test the water factors is essential. If the pool is a once a week service, I'll check for the total chlorine and the pH every week. Once a month, I'll check for the alkalinity. It doesn't change that often. And every three months, I'll do a calcium hardness test. And I'll also do a cyanuric acid test at the beginning of the season. If I run into problems, I may retest it later on during the season. So those are the water test factors you should be checking weekly, monthly, or quarterly. And I'm a big fan of the Color Q Pro 7. It's a more expensive test kit. It takes longer to do the water testing, but it's extremely accurate and very easy to use. If the pool I'm servicing is a salt water pool, I'll go ahead and test the salt level at the beginning of the season. I'll also check it again if there's any problems. Now you can see the salt level in this pool is a little bit low. It's at 2,500 parts per million. Okay, every week I inspect the pump basket and clean it. You also want to inspect the pump basket every week for tears. Usually it happens in the back where the impeller's at. Make sure the pump is full of water when you start it. You can use a bucket to fill it up. You also want to inspect the o-ring on the pump lid to make sure that it's still good. Then you go ahead and put the cover back on the pump. You also want to check the timer every week to make sure that it's set correctly and that it's running. And I also like to check these on-off trippers and make sure they're on here really tight. And if the pool has a salt cell, you want to check it every week and clean it when necessary. And I also check for leaks around the equipment area every week. I also listen to the motor to make sure that it sounds okay. So to make things easy on my pool route, I clean the filters twice a year, in March and also in September. And occasionally I filter my route will need a backwashing or a cleaning in between the six month period. And you're gonna get very familiar with the pool equipment on the pools that you service. So after cleaning the pump basket, I also like to clean the skimmer basket. I like doing this when the pool's on, that way all the debris is pulled into the basket. Okay, before I start skimming a pool, I'll spray some tile soap on top. This is diluted with water. So doing this will take the glare off the pool surface. It'll also clump together any surface debris. Then I'll skim the pool surface. Usually I'll go twice around the whole pool. I finish skimming the pool, I'll assess the pool to see if it needs to be vacuumed or just skimmed on the bottom. This pool here has a lot of dust on the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and vacuum it. And if the bottom of this pool was relatively clean, I would just skim the leaves off the bottom. Next thing I'll do is I'll clean the pool tiles after skimming the pool. I like the aero scale off. The red bottle has some muriatic acid in it. And if you're a homeowner or a service professional, they get the top quality pool equipment. It makes the job a lot easier. And I also vacuum all my pools with a canister. This keeps the pump basket free of debris. And I highly recommend using a canister when you vacuum each pool. And I also vacuum the spas out. I also use the PowerVac PV2100 on my pool route. There are a lot of accounts on my route where this is essential. After I finish vacuuming, I go ahead and brush the pool. You don't want to brush the pool before you vacuum, otherwise it will stir up a lot of the dirt on the bottom. So brushing the pool prevents algae growth. Also, if you missed any spots in the pool, brushing the pool will make it look more uniformed after you're done cleaning it. After brushing the pool, I'll go ahead and skim the pool one more time from top to bottom. Make sure I didn't miss anything.
And then the last thing I do before I leave is I add chemicals in the pool if needed. So if the chlorine level is low, you can add some liquid chlorine to bring the chlorine level back up. If the pH is high, you can add some muriatic acid to lower the pH. If the pH is low, you can add some borax or soda ash to bring the pH up. And if the alkalinity is low, you can add some baking soda to bring the alkalinity up. And on your pool rock, besides liquid chlorine, it's a good idea to have some shock. Also, a lot of the pools may use the three inch chlorine tablets. So when it comes to adding chemicals to your pool, the number one rule is to be safe with it. I always wear a glove when I'm handling any kind of acid. You always want to pour the acid so you're walking away so there's no fumes. And if you notice any algae in the pool, you definitely want to treat it right away. And so if you're a homeowner or a pool service professional, those are the steps that I take each week when I clean a pool.